Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to episode 81 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. First of all, big thank you to Angus Beer for doing this week's animated intro. It was amazing. And big thank you to Hydro Shrimp for donating some of the footage for this episode. Having some help on such a massive game is always appreciated. But I don't want to wait any longer. Let's do this. So the first thing that I want to look at is the thing that's always the most interesting to me in open world games. And that's level of detail and how developers choose to use it. In Skyrim you might notice that in certain areas you have to do a loading screen before you get into the town, like here in Whiterun. And of course this is because the game has to load in all the characters and the details on the buildings and everything in between. So if we were to go inside of Whiterun before loading it, you can see it's totally unpopulated and it has low poly buildings representing the entire town. So I got a ton of viewer requests this week. As always, you can follow me on Twitter to keep up to date on which game I'm going to be doing next, as well as letting me know what you want to see in that episode. And naturally, there was a ton of requests for stuff at the beginning of the game because you have so little control of your character. One of the first questions was, where's the dragon come from while your character's on the old chop block? And although it's not the most interesting thing in the world, I can show you that he does just kind of fade into the scene. A lot of games tend to make the characters blip into the screen, but for Alduin, as well as many other dragons from Skyrim, it starts off with this nice little transition. Transition. But way, way more interesting than that is what happens when Alduin attacks the town and your character is forced to look in a certain direction. Now, normally in game, you're looking at the ground pretty much, and so the destruction that Alduin initially unleashes can't be seen. Well, what I personally love from this is that at first, people in the scene are attacking Alduin, and the scene almost seems like it's going to play out seamlessly, but then it just blips into aftermath destruction. You might notice that there's far fewer characters in the area now, and that's probably because they want to save on resources, considering the fact that this scene in particular has a lot going on within it. Another awesome request was that someone asked about the character models at the very start of the game, you know, before you actually get to customize your character. They wanted to know what does the character look like in third person because the game never allows you to go in that perspective before you customize your character. Well, as you probably expect, it's that default Nord model, but there is one little difference here. He doesn't have his signature goatee that would normally load in with him. But much stranger than that is whenever the character is asked to walk in a certain path against the player's will, in third person, your character's arms retract into their body. So this next discovery was first published by Swankybox, who I want to give all the credit to here. In fact, I don't want to give you all the details of this discovery so that you have an incentive to go see his video to check it out. But this footage that he's letting me use here can illustrate a point, and that's the developers of Skyrim can use the outside boundaries to test things. And specifically for the 360 version of the game and not the PC, you can find some dragons outside of the boundaries, as well as an unmodeled building with its nighttime textures that normally overlay a low poly building at night as well as an indistinguishable block. And if you have a 360 copy of the game and you want to know where you can find these things, I'll leave a link to his original video in the description down below. Um, I think? Next up, we're going to talk about boxes, and just trust me, boxes become pretty interesting when it's on a show like this. See, all throughout Skyrim with NPC characters, you might notice that there are crates underneath the stages. But why would there be boxes underneath the stages? Doesn't that seem a little bit odd? Well, yes, viewer, yes it is, even for a Bethesda game. Because what these boxes are used for is to store the items of vendors. If you were to sneak a little peek inside of one of these claptraps, you would find identical inventory to what you would find from that vendor. If we got any pirates in the audience, I'm sure you're thrilled to death. Hey, did any of you guys ever wonder what a frostbite spire looks like before it drops down on the player? Well, I did. So I went ahead and took a look just to see how far outside of the boundaries it is and what pose it's in. If it was even there at all, which happy to say it is. Looking as menacing as ever. I told you to go away. 
I'm not opening this door for anybody. In the main quest line, A Cornered Rat, there's an old man in the sewers by the name of Espern underneath the city of Riften. And a lot of folks on Twitter want to know what's going on behind the door while you're talking to him. And while most players were let inside of the room, there's one thing that nobody was able to see, which is what it looks like while he's unlocking the door. And only just to remove the curiosity, you can see that he's just standing behind the door until it's unlocked. But to the player's knowledge, he's telling you what he's doing and you can hear sound effects of him unlocking stuff. There we go. Only a couple more. There we are. Come in, come in. That's better. I found this one to be wicked awesome. So right outside of the map at the very start of the game, you have leftover terrain just in case the player manages to somehow sneak a peek over the mountains, despite the fact that the game tries to deny you from moving any further to a point where you could. Now normally you don't really find anything at all, and honestly why should you? It would be a waste of time on the developer's part. But for some reason outside here is a low poly model of the white gold tower from Oblivion, the tallest building in Cyrodiil. It's also set with the right settings you can just barely see this tower in the break of Dawn Quest. But for those of you who already knew this, here's a much better look at it. So right now we're in Pelagius' mind, doing the quest The Mind of Madness, and this unique little world holds some off-camera secrets. It seems as though there are some unused elements that were supposed to be used for this quest, and yet although it was scrapped, it didn't stop the developers from leaving it behind. And what we got way off in the distance is some unused rooms, including a giant room with floating pieces, and another room with a tiny house inside of it. What this is all meant for, I couldn't really tell you, but the devs over at Bethesda thought fit to never let you find out. And you know, if I was to wager some sort of guess as to how this worked, I'd imagine since this is a world inside of someone else's mind, your character could have been shrunken down for this room, while an NPC would be a normal size at the table. And I only say this because you can access the doors that are inside the tiny house. Alright, here's another viewer request. Someone wanted to know what the Civil Wars look like from a eagle's eye view. Which I imagine the reason for that is because the battles are typically larger than any other portion of the game. Taking it high in the sky allows you to see that the battles aren't really as grandiose as it makes itself out to seem while you're in the middle of it. But still, it's cool to see it all in one shot. So I showed this off on Twitter first to give a bit of a test audience to see if people could handle it and uh, the short answer is not a lot of people were able to handle it. A lot of people found it really creepy, but there's something interesting here involving the dog that I need to show you and maybe if I explain it, it won't be as terrifying as it was without any context. Inside the dog's model is really interesting. A lot of character models tend to have eyeballs that are half modeled, but for the dogs in Skyrim, they seem to have orbs inside of their heads for additional dog hair. But even more curious than that, and you can see it here, there are eye sockets for the dog as well. You don't usually ever see both in a character model, but since there's no back face culling in the world of Skyrim, it it looks really freaky when you take the camera inside of the dog because the eye sockets are covering up the eyeballs you normally see on the outside of the dog. And the last suggestion from you guys that got worked into the episode was what does it look like to do the dragon shout from another angle? Because normally, if you do the dragon shout in third person, you only get a look at the main character's back. Well, the developers were just as much aware of this as you guys were, and despite the fact that you see the dragonborn's mouth move in the trailers, in-game it doesn't move at all. So we're taking a look at Sovngarde today, not because we can do a full zoom out of it, that's just kind of a bonus. The big thing here is that past the mountains are some odd patterns. It's completely made up of water and raised ground. And I'm ready to admit that this is just armchair speculation, but I'm thinking that at one point this was intentional. Maybe this map was totally retooled into something completely different in the end, but I feel like that base work that you're seeing outside of the boundaries is a relic of something that once was, not a product of something that just is. And it's not even just this pattern here that seems to remain, there's also just completely black areas that are made up of smaller individual squares if you look at them from down below, which shows evidence of these square tiles meeting with each other. And I couldn't be happier to show off something in Sovngarde of all places, to have a new little fact to add to an already interesting place. Oh, 
Angus Beer, thank you so much for doing this week's animated intro. I loved it, dude. Thank you again. You did the Breath of the Wild episode. If you guys haven't seen that one, make sure you check it out down below. And uh, thank you, Swanky Box, for allowing me to use a portion of your footage from your channel. Um, guys, the full video is down below if you want to see how to pull that off. And also, Hydro Shrimp, dude, thank you so much for helping out with the show. It made it a lot easier to get a lot more content out. So, much appreciated. Uh, guys, there's links to his channel down below as well. Uh, again, um, you may not have seen this in the intro if you're watching this a while from now, but I'm going to have a panel at PAX East uh, in April. It's going to be 7 o'clock on Friday, I think. It's going to be with Beta64 and A Plus Start. Very excited for it. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. And uh, what's going to be the episode for next week? Well, the obvious answer has to be Spyro, but I'm not going with Spyro yet. I, uh, I'm going to go with um, Sonic Forces because there's a camera available for it. People have been asking for it. And um, it's going to coincide with a release that A Plus Start might be doing. So that would be exciting. Anyways, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm going to go in, hang out, and do real people things. Anyways, see you later. Bye.